Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? I'm Lily Marston here with Jesse Smiles and we're on episode 115, which feels like a mini milestone. It does, but is it really a milestone if we keep taking steps back and talking about Austin McBroom again? Because that just feels like, you know, it's just really weighing us down. I thought you were going to say like, is it really a milestone if we talk about it? And I'm like, yeah, I think you're supposed to talk about milestones. No, That's no. The point. But no, um, just Austin. Awesome. You know, it's not our fault. Nothing is going on, you guys. I feel like last week was like super eventful with the whole Nikki thing, even though most of that happened after we filmed. Sorry if we didn't include everything. Um, I hope my updates were adequate. Yeah, this week it seems like Austin is the main focus. He is, there is a lot going on with him. And honestly, what I wanna use our segment for is to get down to the bottom of it, of whether or not Austin McBroom is lying. Him and Catherine, are they lying? Are they even getting divorced? What the fuck is happening at this point? We're gonna get down to it. I've never been more confused about a situation in my life. I'm honestly not confused at all. I don't want to spoil it, but I think they're faking everything. And I have proof. Oh. I feel like there's enough evidence to support the fact that they are lying to some extent. They might actually be getting divorced, but the ins and outs of it are iffy at best. I think that that's the key. I don't think they're lying about the actual divorce. I think they are splitting up. But ever since the RV came into the equation, all right, something's wrong. Yeah. So we're going to discuss that. We're going to look at all the stuff circulating right now. And then we're going to talk about a really weird CEO that ruined his life on TikTok. Basically, his whole business because he just wanted to be an asshole. Seems to be a recurring theme these days. Yeah, it really is. What's up with CEOs these days? Are they okay? I don't know. Between the McBrooms and CEOs, they're just um, tanking careers. Or maybe the McBrooms are doing... I can't really say with them, actually. <laughs> so which one do you want to start with? <sighs> Let's just start with Austin. Okay, so the last we left off with Austin was where? I don't even remember. He was um, recovering from his man flu. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So I'm so confused. So we know for a fact, and I feel like this is one of the strong points of evidence. We know he lied at least once because he documented himself because he's literally filming every single thing that he's doing. He documented himself moving, quote unquote, from Catherine's house to his new place. Not only that, he filmed himself touring the new place. Then he's like, oh my God, you guys know I really wanted that house and I got it. Then he said, I'm moving and today I'm sick, but I'm still moving all my shit to my new house. You guys haven't seen the house yet, but my first choice, the house that I really, really, really want is like super close to my kids and it's like golf cart distance, right? So I've been praying for this home for the last week that I move into it and that this process can be so smooth for my kids. They can come back and forth to my house, to Catherine's house every day. And so I just go back to the house and I get a call from my agent. He's like, Austin, guess what? I'm like, what? He's like, you got the house. And so for today's update, I'm actually supposed to be packing right now. If you don't know, I was able to get the home that I really, really wanted, which was my biggest stress and that's out the way. So I'll be moving in later today. I'll be sleeping there tonight and I will be there now. I'm having an amazing morning. Just dropped my daughters off at school and today's the day y'all. Today's the day I move my little nasty ass in to my new house and I got a lot to do today. And then all of a sudden he just says, just kidding, I don't have a house. I'm gonna live in an RV. I got something to share with you guys. You know, regarding my living situation, it's been a little complicated and there was like a minor minor setback it was a little, just a little minor setback but you know everything's working out unfortunately i was unable to move into the home that i really really wanted and you guys know how much that meant to me because i get to be as close as i can be to my kids but i did figure out another solution that is just temporary but it's as best as i can do for now and i'm happy with it and as long as they're happy and i'm happy that's all that matters so this is what i did i was able to to get this new motorhome and so I'll be living here temporary and they're right here so I still get to be close to my kids because they're literally you know right across the street from me the house that I really 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 wanted I was unable to move into it I can't explain why but it's still a process okay it's still a process and I will move into that house put it out there in the universe I will move into that house whether it's tomorrow 
or whether it's a year from now. Seems fishy. I have a slight theory. I don't know if this is true because I also question, do they have money? How can they afford these places? You know, how can they get approved for these places? It seems like that is questionable. But one of my theories is maybe he got the place and then they're like doing some last minute work on it or something. Mm. And so he can't be living in it right now. So he like, he has it because he acted like he was already like in the process of moving his physical items into this house. I'm pretty sure he was actually Snapchatting in between where he's just like, oh, I've been moving yeah. all day. <laughs> this one like is my favorite because it matches my house. I know you guys can't see it right now, but once you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. I told you guys the vibes in my house are very masculine. I have a little bit of dark colors going on here. So, exactly. What? So either he was lying about that or he's lying about the rest of this, which I think that's the case because it's gotten so ridiculous. Yes. But 100%. you don't like find out halfway through moving that something didn't go through or like you didn't get the credit check. Like, no, I don't think he would have announced it if he hadn't already gotten confirmation. Uh, that's true. They're very known for like inflating their reality and being like, oh my God, guys, things are going so well. So I could see his realtor being like, there's a good chance you're gonna get it. And him being like, I got it. Like I could totally see that with Austin, but. But I, I feel like it's weird that he would have acted like he was literally in the process of moving when he wasn't. He wasn't even being like really extra about it. He was just kind of like, I don't know. It just, it seemed legit that he was actually in the process of moving. I think he got possession of the house. I don't think it was like he hadn't gotten the keys Well, yet. here's the thing. Number one, it's of my belief. Everything we're about to say is obviously speculation. We're trying to figure out if he's lying or not. Yeah, so number one, I want to make sure that I say that nothing here is concrete. It's just my opinion, okay? But it is my opinion that I don't even think, and actually, I know that for a fact, because you don't tour a home you're going to buy and get it all in a week. That's not, I mean, it's very rare that that would happen. You have to, first of all, he would have to be like pre-approved for a loan. Then he would have but to. But I don't think he bought it. But that's what I'm saying. So he's definitely renting whatever house he's trying to move into. To, which kind of matches up with your theory where a lot of rentals are not available right away. There could be a million different things. They could have been showing him a model and maybe somebody else clears it out and February 1st, he's gonna have that place. Like we don't know the ins and outs of it, but that makes oh, a lot more true. sense. that's true. It's also the end, it's almost the end of the, it is the end of the month right now. Exactly. We're filming, it's the 30th. So yeah, that tracks too. Yeah, so I have the feeling that very soon he's gonna be like, oh my God, I found a place and it's just gonna be that place he originally got. They must have said like, yeah, you can move in in like seven days or whatever. But like he already does have possession and he was able to move stuff into it. He just physically is not allowed to move into it yet. And I think that he was like, okay, well, what can I do for the next week to like right. play up all of this attention that I'm already getting? Well, so the reason why I even wanna talk about it because listen, I'm not an idiot, guys. I, if I do think he's lying, which I do think he's lying, I know the reason why he's lying is because he wants attention, he wants money. He's getting more attention now than he's gotten in years. Like nobody gave a for shit about sure. him for the last few years. But now that him and Catherine got divorced, people are having a really fun time laughing at him. And honestly, I don't know how self-aware he is. I don't know how self-aware he's capable of being. So I have issues with my theory of him lying because he can't be this funny. There is 0% chance that this is real. Like the, the RV tour, should we start with that? Yeah, so I will show you guys, it's two parts. We don't have to watch the whole thing, but I think the beginning is the most telling. And I think what's even more telling is the picture he posts before his RV tour. No, this picture is actually after the RV tour. I think it was the day after, so that was my bad. But this photo is like so telling to me. It's him fake crying. He got like this, this looks fake. I mean, what isn't fake about this photo? It would be easier to answer right. that. Right, okay, well, so first of all, there's, a, <laughs> there's something in the windshield that's like tucked in there that says, Violation. This vehicle is something illegally, it's basically saying like this is illegally parked. And it looks like he printed that out on a shoe. Like it's just, it's so bad. <laughs> that is not a real violation. I'm surprised there's not an exclamation mark after violation, to be honest. Well, would you believe it if that was a violation that came from the neighborhood watch? It looks like a homemade job. Someone printed this out in their home and that could be plausible if what we're seeing is what we're seeing, which is a ticket, quote unquote, he calls it a ticket. It's not a ticket. A police officer did not issue this, but it's a paper that says neighborhood watch alert, I think, which is like, we see you, bitch. Why are you parking your RV on the sidewalk? That's essentially what this is. Not to mention he's crying and wearing Catherine's bonnet again. Like, come on. That is honestly, that's been kind of like normalized to me and I didn't even register that that's what that was. It's just too goofy to believe. Like this is yes. obviously a joke, which honestly might be the first time Austin's ever been funny in his life. Seriously. The thing is, 
I bet you they live in a gated community. So I wouldn't be surprised if the one he's holding could be real, but I do think it's weird that it would be saying neighborhood watch alert. And it wouldn't say, like, it would say the neighborhood on there. And especially when we get into it now, you're going to see that he lies about the ticket. Like, he says it's a ticket. He says an officer came. Like, that's bullshit. Oh, interesting. Okay, let's watch the RV tour. My gosh. We'll just, we'll skim through this. We're not going to sit through this whole crap. But before we do, tell me that this doesn't give the energy of, like, okay, let's film, like, a crib style parody with absolutely zero preparation. Like, he went into this and he was like, I'm just going to improv. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And this seems like the part where most people were like, okay, you're fucking with us like this was the part where everyone didn't believe him because again even if he thinks he's being funny and maybe he might be being funny at some points he's not a good actor and to no. me it's very obvious he's acting here yes before this he does post a snapchat in his car where he was saying i'm gonna have to live in an rv it's only temporary yada 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 so then after that of course he's got to give us a full tour all right guys so i'm about to give you a quick little tour of my new place um again this is just temporary but it's dope it's dope. It's and the stained dope. shirt, come on. A grease stain? Like, a, what, do, what do you mean? What were you doing to possibly even get that? Here's my front door. Shit. The keys be that is like, that I feel like was planned. Yeah, 100%. Oh my God, the slippers kill me so much. Bro, this is where I'm gonna be staying, y'all. Fire. So check it out, this is my living room right here. It's my living room. I just got you know, try to get a few. You didn't get that. So he did not buy that. No, 100%. That was there. That um, Yes. Here's my dining room table. Basically fits all of my kids. So it's perfect. Uh, just got this TV in. As, as you can see, like, this is brand new. Why the fuck would you need to zoom in to show that there is a film still on the TV? There's elements of this that I think are funny. That was like such a stupid joke. He does that multiple times where he's like, these are the best seats that anybody can buy. Everything's custom. If you could see the sink, it's brand new. I don't know how he got this RV. I think he either rented it, but they wouldn't rent it out without the, like, it's brand new, obviously. Like it does yeah. have the film and shit. So maybe he, one of his friends bought it or something. He's like, that's what I that real quick. But definitely I don't buy that he got an RV because RVs are not small investments. Like they're not temporary investments you make, especially when you're Austin McBroom and I'm pretty sure you're not rich anymore. My mom and her husband actually just got um, a new one kind of recently and they like knew they wanted one. They knew what kind they wanted and they spent like weeks looking at it. Say the house did fall through. Say we do believe that. In what realm would Austin ever be like, you know what the solution is? I'm gonna buy an RV instead of stay at a hotel, stay in an apartment, rent a house. Like none of that lines up for me. Does he look like someone that's gonna go buy an RV? And also I know for a fact that he is very aware of the chatter going on right now on the internet. Like there is a video of him and his friend is sitting like on the edge of the bed describing to him what people are saying online, albeit he is sugarcoating it. He's saying it in a very nice way and Austin's like, that's crazy. So what are they saying? What are they saying? Like he was very into it. So I know that he is understanding and playing into all of this. Hey, what they say the other day? Cause I was sick. They got you on there. When you posted about when you were sick, waking up from the, where were you? Like in the shower and they got you with your, what was that? Like a hair, hair net? <laughs> and they got you looking like, <laughs> like, you didn't want to get out the house cause you were sick. So what they say? So like they're at this point, they're just taking anything. Like, right, of course. You can be in the car, you can be here. You can, this this might even go viral. Yeah, right, right. But it's just you, like, looking down bad, like... <laughs> but what they say, up, though, they said... They said, Austin doesn't want to leave the house. So he's, he's acting like he's sick. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard that, that was the funniest shit ever because I could really see someone doing that type of shit. No, but seriously, I thought it was the funniest thing because I could really see, like, people doing that type of shit. Like, imagine I was really acting like I was sick. So I didn't have to move out. Like that sounds crazy. My thing is we must not forget that both Austin and Catherine, not the greatest people. They've done so much fucked up shit. It's like, why are they doing this? Because if we look at their history, they're scammers, allegedly. They have scammed many people from what I've seen. If that's the case, what's the grift here? Like, why lie? Is it really just to get views on Snapchat and make the yes. money? Because that makes sense too. 100%, I think. Because he, I think, sees that his views must be like quadruple what they, if not more, than what they normally are. And he knows that this isn't gonna last forever.
forever. And he also knows that he is the butt of the joke right now. And regardless of whether he's normally self-aware, I think he, I don't know if it's like, I need to make money so I have money to feed my kids. Or if he's just like, this is gonna be how I like transition my career. I'm gonna be like funny now. <laughs> Honestly, some people were saying like, oh, why would he want to be the butt of the joke for that? But in my he eyes, I'm is. like, him and, Ka exactly. Him and Catherine have been the butt of the joke for years now. And now he kind of has like the control of it. So he's like, oh, fuck it. Like I'll play That's the that. thing. It's like now he wants to kind of take back. It's like when you become the meme. Like we've talked about that before. When you embrace the meme right. instead of trying to fight it. Because if yes. he tried to fight it, people would just make fun of him more. And now he has people, including us, kind of confused because we're like, what's happening here? Because it's too far. Like it's weird. Also, that guy sitting on the end of the bed. I guess that's who was taking the pictures at the hospital. We have that question answered. It's just very clear that he sees the view increase and he's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna like lean into this 150% and this is what we're getting, which makes me so uncomfortable, but also just so confused. And there are certain parts of this that we're gonna get to that I'm like, okay, even if you're joking, that definitely makes the life of the people that you're around more difficult right now. So how worth it is this joke? One, also a key thing to point out about him leaning into this is that the character he's leaning into is this like desperate man that like wants to be back with Catherine and like can't let go and needs to be close. And like his whole joke here is that like people even were joking before he started doing this, that he had like rented the sidewalk outside of her house and that he was gonna like camp out there. And I think that that's what he's playing into is like, yeah, sure. well, how funny would it be if I like bought an RV and lived outside of her house? That is the most absurd way you could get about this and he's doing it. Yeah, that part I do find a little bit funny. I don't know. It's so hard to laugh with Austin. I, I don't I know, accept it. I My know. body rejects it. makes me it. uncomfortable. But I'll say this next part, because that whole RV tour is just BS to me. It's literally him being so obviously like the worst actor ever and just being like, yeah, my brand new RV. He says that the, that the room was customized to fit the bed. This bed is probably one of the most comfortable beds that could even be in a motorhome. Like I had to customize basically like this room. For the, for the mattress to fit. Sir, it would be the opposite. Like he acts like he did like reconstruction on the RV. <laughs> but this next part is him showing us. So that picture that we saw with his violation from the neighborhood watch, this is him discovering it first thing. And I'm pretty sure he's still wearing Catherine's bonnet. Also, I have to note, she is reposting things on TikTok. There was one of like someone pretending to be Austin and like dragging him on the floor, like out. And it was like Catherine taking oh my God, it out. I love she that reposted one. it. Catherine, stop, please, I'll be out. No, no, you said that you'd be out already. I was sick, bitch, please, please. No, just get the fuck out. What the fuck? This man is not sick. What, he just did, what? Oh my gosh, what is he doing? This is a grown ass man, by the way. So she is very in on this as well, uh, but anyway. Uh, I'm so mad right now. I woke up this morning um, and I had a good ass night, even though it was a little cold. Woke up this morning to a damn ticket. I get a ticket literally at 7.13. They left this fucking ticket on my windshield saying that neighborhood watch alert. This area is for residents only, even though I used to live there. If you are not a resident of this neighborhood, you may not leave your park vehicle on the street full. When you're not a resident anymore and you used to live here, that means you're not a resident. <laughs> yeah. More than 72 hours. No, it would be none. Has it been 72 hours? I don't even know, but that violation. Clocking it. What officer, officer did this? Like, people do not want me to be close to my kids. I just... Oh my God. Like you're reading a letter that says neighborhood watch alert and you're like, what officer did this? No officer. It's, it's, no, a, it's neighborhood a neighborhood watch, watch alert. It's probably someone literally right next to you. And they don't want me to be close to my kids. No, even if they this know it was real, is. they don't know who you are. Dealing with this shit now. And thank God that my neighbor let me park, <laughs> let me park in their property. And I'm like not too far from the house. Like I can still see oh my like God. through the tree a little bit. I can still see Captain's house through the tree. So that makes me feel safe. Like that, that alone, on. I'm like, that's a joke. Okay, so there's 
a few other aspects because the RV thing shook the world, but pretty immediately you and I were like, eh, no, <laughs> like this is not it. The tour alone was like, this is not true. And also he acted like he had moved stuff into the RV when it's like either very much clear that it's stuff that came with the RV or like one trash bag of stuff or something. Like it, mm -hmm. none of his shit is in this RV because guess where it is? Probably in the house that he's about to move into. Exactly. So this, I want you to judge if this encounter is fake or not. I don't know if you've seen this, the CVS employee. I just saw it right before we started filming. I am pretty sure this is fake too, but let's see. That's what she gets. Oh, no, thank you. That's what she gets for cutting me. Aren't you living in an RV? Uh, have a blessed day, what? Aren't you living in an RV? Yeah, I am, bro. You're talking under your breath, shit. Yeah. That's crazy. That's yeah. I'm living in an RV. Is that a problem? No, I was just wondering. Because, uh, like, you be talking some crazy stuff right now. I was just wondering. Oh, yeah, I was talking because a lady cut me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can't live in an RV. No, you can. He's talking shit about me because I'm living in an RV. That's crazy. That's crazy. And he's working at CVS. That is crazy. That's fucked up. That's fucked up. Bye. I'm living in an RV. Bye. Thoughts? <laughs> I don't know because people are weird. I was just about to say that. I've had a few weird interactions that, you know, I can At CVS see specifically, real. I've had some weird ones. But because he then makes the comment, like, you're working at CVS, like, I'm so much better than you kind of thing, that actually awesome. gives me the vibes that it is real. <laughs> but right. I'm confused why someone would call it out in the way that they did. See, I'm confused. I know it wasn't like, oh, that's awesome. You live in an RV. But like, it genuinely just seemed like he's like, oh my God, you're the guy that I've seen. Yeah. I'm like, you know what I mean? He may not even know who Austin is. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking that one's one of the real things, but because he's always filming, he caught it. That one I could exactly. check on the like maybe list. So enter the weirdest fucking story arc ever because talk about story crossovers. We got to right? visit our old friend, DDG. If you guys don't remember who DDG is, he is is Halle Bailey's, the Little Mermaid's boyfriend. Who won't shut his mouth. I guess he's more um, Twitter fingers than he is vocal. He and Halle Bailey just had a child. I'm talking they have a newborn baby. There's a few aspects here. From what I understand, Halle and DDG do not uh, show their child. So they don't show their face at all. We don't know anything Good. about their baby other than their baby was literally just born. A lot of people are thinking because Austin films so much, he's gonna fuck up and like accidentally film the child or something. I'm like, oh my God, he would if anybody would do it it would be him hopefully Correct. not but the reason why we're talking about them is because austin well they both kind of teased it so ddg actually was talking about like you guys might know who's coming to my house that's my first inkling that this is fake they started like hyping it up almost i had no idea this had happened i had only seen the rv stuff and i was actually talking to becca about it because she's been posting on tiktok a lot about it and i was like yeah i don't believe any of this and then i wa kept watching one of her videos and this storyline came into play and i go whoa whoa wait when when did this happen? This is the most recent development. So we don't know what's gonna happen after we film this. And by the time this is uploaded, something could happen. He'll be He'll at a- introduced a new character, I'm sure. Kelly Osborne's house or something <laughs> fucking random as hell. But as of right now, he's at DDG and Halle Bailey's house. So this was DDG prefacing this, who it is notable and it is important to note, he also is on Snapchat. Oh. So he is a Snapchatter. That is how we have this content. Interesting aspect. And they have both been filming like crazy since Austin entered the house. Bang. And um, he asked me if he can stay in my crib. A lot of y'all probably already know who it is, but I know Austin, he going through like a real tough time. And I'm a big believer in like being there for your friends during these type of moments. And I seen like on TikTok and Snapchat that he was staying in the RV. And you know, I just, as a as a real friend, that just didn't sit well with me. So when he asked me if he can come kick it here, you know, I was a little hesitant because of the whoa, baby. Whoa, whoa, but pause. As a real friend, he found out via TikTok and Snapchat that he was. That's true. Out. Yeah, that's a little weird. Well, I mean, I guess not everybody's vocal about their issues, but interesting. That is weird. I was a little hesitant because of the baby, but shocking. I, um, maybe you should have been. It more was hesitant. the right thing for me to do. So I'm gonna do something nice. I'm gonna go get him a room set up. Um, we just gonna figure it out from there. I don't know how long he's supposed to be staying, but I'm gonna get him a little room set up. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna just snap the whole thing. 
So yeah, stay tuned. Interesting. Then he goes to Target and gets him a little goodie bag. So he sets up Austin a real nice setup with a fucking air mattress on the floor and not even one of the good ones because I have slept on air mattresses. You know, the ones that are like really high up. The raised ones. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the only kind that are acceptable to sleep on. Let's be honest. I mean, unless obviously if you can't, but they're not even that much more expensive. Like those little ones, you're going to wake up on the floor. Just sleep on the floor. Also, the fact that he's going to Target for all this, but then <laughs> when you see the room set up, there's not even a full set Bare of bones. <laughs> well, actually we see what he got him at Target. So stay tuned for that. But this is where I start getting into, even if this is fake, this is fucking weird. Okay, number one, Halle Bailey. She doesn't show up in any of this. I don't blame her at all. She's probably no like, what shit. the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. When you have a newborn child, to have one of your annoying, immature ass, scamming ass friends come over and that be films fucking everything. annoying. Yeah, that's just not something anybody wants. Like having anyone around, even if it's like your parents or whatever, living with you with a one month old, fuck that. Like, I'm sorry, yeah. I just don't get it. And even if this is a joke, this is where I'm like, there's a real baby in that house. So what the fuck is going on? Is he really staying there though? Yes. Well, I don't know. So let's get into some of their interactions in the house. One of the ones I saw, by the way, is DDG. It's from his perspective. And he's filming when Austin then knocks on the door. How did he know he was about to knock? There's a ton of instances like that. There's actually, yes. do you want me to show proof that they're lying? Because I do have that. Oh, yes. So they do a lot of what you just said. They film from different perspectives, which in turn gave away that they're absolutely lying and they're staging all of this and they're acting. Yes. Uh, this was one that I came across. Not Austin's claws being out. Please, sir, put those away. At least he doesn't have those fucking embarrassing slippers on. I'd rather him have those on, actually. But so what we're watching is from DDG's perspective, he is showing Austin what he picked him up at Target. So you got the boys on and shit, you know. Socks? Uh, it's like some, you know, some little boozy shit, you know. Tongue scraping <laughs> and shit, you know. Oh, yeah, cute, yeah. Cucumber, man. I got two brush though, so Oh, you got one? Okay, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, I can do that. I okay, so the caption says, notice how the videos were both recorded at different times and he put all of the items back in the bag so they can record both of their POVs for both of their content. So yeah, Austin's not holding a phone at this point. I got you this, man. I didn't know what to get you, but I figured like you'd probably be into books. But, but he got divorced. Yeah, that's a whole other weird aspect is that he got Austin the perfect marriage book. That's the interesting problem. choice. He didn't have that. And then the caption says, was this a good book to give him? Like, come on, you're fucking trolling us. Like, I don't even... I that's can't. the thing. I feel like they're rage baiting everyone. Yeah, they are. Uh, so this is Austin's perspective. And a little mini fan. That's kind of dope. You got me this. <laughs> this is a tongue from you. All right. All right. Native body wash, new daddy action. So this could be one of two things. He could just have put it back in and been like, I'm gonna film my content now, or they're just both full of shit. <laughs> I think it's more likely, but not that I think that that wouldn't be also something they would do, but I do think they're both just bullshit. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, he did put all of the stuff back in the bag. The question is, if this is quote unquote real, did he put them back in just to have some content for himself? He could have easily had them all out and been like, let me show you what DDG got. But he made it seem like everything was still in the bag and now he was going to see it separately. I don't know. It's weird. As if he kind of like got there and the bags were there waiting for him and he didn't have that exchange already. But then also, why the fuck is he buying him a desk fan? Do you think that their air conditioning isn't going like literally this is so trolly like and it's not even that funny is the worst part because this part's not even that funny because again there is a new not baby at there. all I, I feel like it's so much like showing of like oh my god let's go get some stuff that like what well i don't know what do you buy someone that's moving into a house but like they have zero idea and they just think it's like stuff that's funny this isn't funny yeah there was a few other interactions that were weird so again austin got that perfect marriage book and then dd DG posted this. So he had posted that he thought Austin left and then he in turn sees Austin in a corner of a balcony reading that book that he got him. Look at him. He looks like he's crying with his like $500 headphones on. And it says pray for Austin. He was just reading the book. Come on. Uh, come on. So actually, I have to say, while I did say that I, do, I think they aren't lying about the divorce, stuff like that makes me think maybe they are. And they're like long game having the story art come into play where it's like Austin's going to fix his marriage. Someone actually just posted on Reddit that there was a picture, a selfie that Catherine took in the mirror. And in the background, you could see their very specific wall or like giant headboard or whatever the fuck that is. And it's like squares, like wooden squares or rectangles. And when Austin posted a picture recently, 
when he was quote unquote moved out, that was the background of his Snapchat. So people are like, oh, you're full of shit. Like they just do not think that they're even divorced, which I think is a crazy fucking, like that would be insane. For them, it's really I know, not that's that crazy. The thing. Yeah. But it is just so embarrassing. It is so embarrassing. If that is the case, because again, Catherine's also playing into this. Jesus, how do you come back from that? I mean, the only way to come back from it would be like, we fell back in love or something. Like you can't. But that's otherwise. why I'm saying that that's why he's reading the perfect marriage book. And like they're trying to like sprinkle in those little. Oh, that would be fucking crazy. All I'm saying is if they get back together, I will die believing that they just lied. Like it was not them actually falling back oh, in love. If they get back together, I don't. It never. This is all just for content. But anyway, back to DDG, because obviously, again, he has a newborn baby. So I came across this TikTok where Austin was just uh Making himself at home, one could say. And honestly, some of this seems like genuinely how Austin would have to be in real life, but they may just be but playing it I think it that out. is what they're playing into. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so Austin's teaching him how to use this uh, shushing machine, which I actually had with Noah, and it's actually pretty good. So what, I have to put it on his ear or something? <laughs> just hold it near him. Yeah. Just hold it near him, and you don't have to do no shh no more. You just let it do it for See? Really? Tell him, get at you, get at you. Look at this house and then flashback to he bought him a small desk fan. He folded a fitted sheet as if it's like he folded back a normal one. Who no, it's because Austin says it doesn't fit. But he folded it back as if it's like, <laughs> like, what do you mean? You wouldn't sleep under that. So yeah, if you guys are just listening, it's literally an air mattress with a fitted sheet only on half of the bed. You know that felt material of an air mattress? It literally makes my skin crawl. And then a throw pillow. But not <laughs> fluffy, like a little too, like too fluffy for your head yeah. to be. Oh my God. I got my sandals right here with the book. With the perfect marriage book, book, book at the door. Get the fuck out of here. As a door stopper. No, dude. <laughs> All my hats right here. What? Why would you need Look at so many hats? Could you make ramen noodles louder than this? Is my question. The fact that he's cooking ramen is like, this isn't a dorm. Yeah, you're right. The ramen noodles are an extra touch. Look at him. Oh my god, what, what the fuck is that? You Why would you have to like, rattle around ramen noodles, you loud motherfucker? You tell me he wouldn't be door dashing? Try to keep him a little quiet for the baby's sake. All right, school. I got you. I know how that be, y'all. Got three kids. I went through this whole process three times. Fooled us. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't. It's so unserious. And laughable that, yeah, it's too much. But um, that was also filmed from DDG's perspective. Not all of that, but when he starts playing the music. So we'll just jump to when he turns it off because it's copyrighted, but it's loud. Turn it all the way down. Bad, bro. Yeah, the baby's sleep, bro. <laughs> No, the noodles gonna... are not even cooked yet. That has to be like just not even a minute after he put them in there. Show you one? Nah, I'm straight. What, Lisa? Uh, I was just finna, um... You know you ain't gotta stay, but I don't mean you can leave. I'm just chillin'. Yeah, I know. I was, I'm finna, um, go upstairs and shit. But yeah. Nah, you good. Make yourself at home. Bro. I'm gonna probably get the gym better, though. Alright. Oh my god. Does he start playing it right after? I did. Yeah. Yes. He was just casually filming himself watching TV when Austin knocks. I'm about to leave in a little bit. Is that cool? You finna dip? Yeah, I'm about to leave. I gotta check on the kids. I'll probably go to Catherine for a little bit and then um, just chill over there and probably come back here. And now he's just eat. Like, this all had to happen within like 15 oh, minutes. Nice. He's just now eating the ramen? Yeah, and then on multiple occasions, DDG posted Austin asking if he could bring his kids over. And he's like, but maybe not, right? Because of the baby. Like, come the fuck on. That's such bullshit. We've kind of established this is fake. I mean, everyone thinks it's yes. fake. Yes. Now, where does this end? Do you really think this ends with them getting back together and then just being like, JK? I don't see that far in advance, but I do see like, obviously not Kelly Osbourne, but like, what if he literally has like a little schedule set up where it's like, 
okay, for the next, like, week or so, I'm going to spend a different night at a different, like, famous friend's house mm. where it's just going to try and jack up viewership as much as they can to, like, get as much attention while he can while people are still entertaining Sure. This. Let's say that happens, and then he moves into his place, which we know he probably has and he's just waiting for. Then he moves in there. And everyone's just going to stop giving a shit. Like, what's he going to do? Pretend with binoculars he's outside of Catherine's house every week? Like, it's just going to lose But that's the thing. It's like, I think he's trying to just get as much attention as he can while he can. Talk about short-term, it won't last forever. view. (laughs) He's got tunnel vision. (laughs) It's Austin. But have you also seen, um, I think I texted it to you earlier. It's him talking about people, like, coming for Catherine. Oh, yes. Uh Uh-huh. Because I think this is also interesting. Because then he goes and tells them to show her love on her snapchat guys and i'm pissed about even though all this process is temporary for me and i'm staying in an rv i'm staying at my boy's place don't come for Catherine because she also offered for me to stay at her place so don't come for her acting like she ain't supporting me or helping me because she's offered already but i didn't want to move back into the house with her because i don't want her to make her feel uncomfortable and i want to give her her space Okay, obviously during this separation, we need space. Not too much space, but enough space. Okay? So, again, don't come for her because that makes me mad. That is the mother of my kids. She gave me three beautiful blessings. She gave me the world. That woman gave me so much joy, life, experience, and blessings. So again, if you come for her, I have to come for you. It's as simple as that. Okay? And that's the last time I'm going to speak on it. Because that's my baby. No, I don't want to say baby mom's bad. That is the mother of my kids. You all hear me? Thank you. You actually know what? Matter of fact, you need to go over to her pages, wherever it is, and tell her you apologize if you were one of those people trying to bash her for that. Okay? Tell her you love her. Tell her... You want to see her win. Tell her that. Thank you for me. Thank you. Okay, so now that we got that out the way. Okay, that was the one part of it that I was like, oh my God, like you are so full of shit. They're doing it all for content. Yeah. Oh my God. And he's getting all the views and now he's like, okay, let's spread it over to Catherine too. Before we go any further, we do have a word from one of our favorite sponsors, ZocDoc. If you guys don't know, ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Which means you don't have to call, you can just pick from their schedule. They have appointments usually like the next day, which is super clutch because usually when you call, it takes like three months. And we're not talking about a few doctors. They have thousands of doctors, each which are patient reviewed and they're verified reviews so they're coming from real people so when you see that you can make sure the vibes are vibing before you actually go into the office and meet someone and have an awkward experience you pretty much know what you're gonna get into with ZocDoc and you know there's all types of things you have to compromise on in life a doctor should not be one of them they should make you feel comfortable and heard and you know prioritize your health so if you're needing to find a new doctor go to ZocDoc.com DWKT and download the ZocDoc app for free and find and book a top rated doctor today that's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com DWKT ZocDoc.com DWKT Thank you so much to ZocDoc for being an amazing sponsor of this podcast. Yikes. Oh my gosh. This is not what I thought was going to happen. It was fun making fun of him just because he was sick, which by the way, you know what we forgot to talk about after we posted our video about Austin McBroom coming down with the man flu. Everyone made fun of him for having the man flu and like totally exaggerating. And then he posted a video that Catherine had recorded of him puking. Okay. He's literally like, guys, I was sick. Watch this. Are we going to say that? Because he sounds like the fucking exorcist. (laughs) Yeah, it's so bad. And honestly, I cannot deal with vomit. So we will not show you that so don't even worry but um it's all been so unserious like it's all been too it's just straight up sitcom level like What would someone do in a sitcom if they were sick and like the wife was annoyed? Yeah, honestly, I am at the point where I do not believe anything else that happens to Austin McBroom. Nothing that comes out of I do not even know if they're actually getting divorced. I would be interested for places like TMZ or like places that look at local filings and stuff to actually let us know because from what I understand, nothing's been filed. Well, I was going to say, have they even filed or anything or did they just like separate and then they will I think they just separated and he says it like multiple times like when you're... 
were separated when you go through separation. So they might just play this off as we just need a time. I think he's sick. he's planted several seeds with like how he talks about it to imply mm-hmm. that maybe it's not permanent. And now with that fucking book, I'm like, you're kidding. Let me tell you, Catherine, the one sliver of a chance at a redemption arc which you are just as bad as Austin in my opinion Mm -hmm. so I don't think you really should have had one but the one sliver you had you just diarrhea on it if you are getting back with this man because oh my god the reaming that the internet is gonna do I do feel like almost some people will kind of rejoice and being like kind of appreciate the grift and be like that was funny like I respect them for it No, that will literally be the most embarrassing thing. Like, are you kidding? That's what you had to do to like try and like save any semblance that a career you had was fake a divorce and like pull this bullshit. I I can't. And let's not forget, they are real parents. Yes, real parents. Three real children. Three kids. Maybe four if you can (laughs) include Austin. I just don't see how they can come back from something like that. And honestly, it's kind of sick if you think about it because if it is fake, then where do they think their dad is? They're so used to living with him. That's so weird. If you guys think that Austin is not lying for whatever reason and that this is really what's happening to him, he's really living in in DDG's house. Yes, that. But also, please describe why. I need to know. I need to pick your brain a little bit. What are the realistic aspects of that? Because I've yet to see one. But anyway, that's pretty much up to date with Austin. Okay, so popping in here because, wow, Austin has been busy. Although, can you really call it being busy if all you're doing is eating shit. Anyway, he has lived about a thousand lives in the last three days, so much so that it seems to be confusing people in his real life, and we'll get to that in a second, but let's go in order. So while he was staying at DDG's house, it seems that they have collaborated in the studio together and created quite the song about how Austin wants Catherine back, and I'll admit there are parts of this that are funny, like when he's saying that he's watching her through the trees. You know that I miss you, I've been watching you right through the tree. I've been missing the kids lately. I've been living alone. The RV that I got nice, but sometimes I just want to be home. But this is like the most concrete evidence that this is bullshit. And I think they know that we know. So they're just playing into it fully. But Austin's really leaning into this. And him and DDG showed the song. They showed the process of making the song. He has played it while he was getting a haircut. No, no, did you really hear that? He said, sparkling, but I want steel, my son. He said, never take an L, my daughter, L. I want to come see Alea, my other daughter. He has even played it for his daughters, which I find really fucking weird because again, they're children and the song is about him wanting their mom back. And this just has to be confusing for them. Like, I don't see how it could not be. All right, girls. So before I drop you off at school, I want you guys to listen to daddy's new song, okay? You guys tell me what you think. Okay, be honest, okay? Tell me if you like it or And it seems like it's just confusing everybody in his life because his brother Landon, who we've talked about a few times on this channel and is problematic in his own ways, was I guess getting pressed by the public to come and get his brother and like, why is he staying at someone else's house when he could be staying at your house? So, can someone tell me why I woke up this morning with literally thousands of DMs and comments on my Snapchat saying, get your brother. Saying, what is he doing? Saying, react to ddg snapchat i'm like well why why is dd getting why is he getting involved like what was what's going on i'm not knowing mind you i don't talk to my brother every day we're both grown men okay he's 30 something and i'm 27 like we both got kids there's a whole situations going on like it, we don't we don't have the time to talk every day right so i don't really know everything that's going on okay so i'm like what so I took the privilege to going on DDG's Snapchat and seeing what was going on. But after he explains this, he eventually does get together with Austin and brings him a housewarming present to his RV. So when I saw that, I thought, okay, this is BS just like the rest of them. However, when they actually do get to talking about things, they kind of have a real interaction. It seems real. I could be wrong. At this point, everything's probably fake. But check this out. I don't know. It seems real. It's going to bother me if I don't get this question off my chest. Why did you hit up Daryl? to do that to go to his house and you didn't hit me up no to be honest you got a girlfriend now and like i just feel like that ain't she, stopping nothing bro no nah, bro i just feel like she he has a he has a baby though 
Yeah, but he got help. Like, People are hitting me up, making me seem like a bad person. I know, that's stupid. As if I denying you access to my home. I know, I don't know why they be taking And out. every day, no, 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 I'm not done. Every day, I go on TikTok, scroll, Osman Broom, scroll, Osman Broom. Comments, Landon, what are you doing? Landon, get your brother. Landon, why are you doing this? Why is he not at your house? And I'm like, what? It's everywhere, bro. And then I come over here. You got one chicken wing in your fridge, bro. Bro, but you see how nice. I see no clothes here, bro. What? You have it's cookie crazy. dough. You, didn't even look at all, bro, I got you have one backpack. Bro. You have no toothpaste. You act like I didn't see that. Bro. Like. You trying, trying to claim me right now. No, bro, I'm not. How nice this RV bro, it, It's this, nice. I bought this cash, bro. I get it, but where? what else now? What do you mean? You see how I'm living. I'm living nice. And I told everybody, including you, this is temporary, bro. Wait till you see my new crib after this crib. This the thing is, you have money. Like, you don't have to look like this on the internet, bro. You don't have to be going through what you're going through. I'm concerned for you, bro. How am I looking, though? You're looking crazy, bro. We have the same last name, bro. You got me looking crazy. What are you talking about? You see luxury everywhere you look. Luxury. Last thing I'm going to say, bro. Because honest, to be honest with you, I really try to come over here on some sympathetic stuff and play that card like online and whatever. But I don't feel sorry for you, bro. I'm really irritated by how off you're looking you and how you about? got me looking off. And you don't even have to, crazy because you don't even have to do this to yourself. Make yourself like this, bro. You're walking around. You got cookie dough in there, bro. You got one chicken wing, one salsa in listen, there, bro. Listen, listen, listen. Look at your outfit, no, bro. Listen to me. And I'm tired of everybody talking no. to me about it. You know what? Damn everybody else, bro. This shit is temporary, bro. When you see me come out of this, I'm going to be a different person, bro. You're going to be like, damn, bro, you really did it. Just like the rest of the world. I'm telling you, bro. You're welcome for your stuff. I love you, bro. I'm always going to love you. You know you can call me. Don't. I don't want to see you at nobody's house besides mine next time. Bro, if something happens. I don't happens. need to call nobody, bro. Real talk. I don't need to call nobody. I don't need nobody, bro. You see what I'm doing. I'm killing the game. All right? Just know that, bro. I'm good, bro. I told you. You see, you see I'm killing it right now. I'm doing good. I'm happy. There's so, a difference between viral and doing good. When I saw that, it did seem like he was actually concerned. I mean, when Austin's lying, it's pretty obvious that he's lying. Unless Landon's a pretty good actor, I feel like part of him was actually concerned. But anyway, after that, again, this has all been in the last like three days, Austin decided to start living his new life, which is not living with Kelly Osbourne as I predicted, but it's equally as weird. And he decided that he's gonna become a student. All right, Snapchat fam, are you guys ready to hear my big announcement? <laughs> you guys are ready. No, no you're not. <laughs> I'm ready to tell you though. <laughs> okay guys, guess what? Austin McBroom is going back to school. <laughs> Yes, I am, guys. And guess what? I got accepted at UCLA. <laughs> so I'm here now. As you can see, I put the fit on to match the school. <laughs> so I'm coming here to get my master's, okay? And then I'm going to get my PhD because, you know, you know, I got to work my way up. And uh, for those who don't know, I already got my degree. I already went to college, got my degree. So they accepted me here at UCLA. LA and now I'm going for my master's. Now when he posted this, people were a little bit confused because number one, enrollment is closed. Another thing that people pointed out is that UCLA does not offer a master's in psychology. Like that is not a thing that they do. But apparently Austin makes all things happen and he was magically enrolled in classes the next day. He was roaming around campus. People were filming him. He was apparently being creepy I'm to students too, RV. which is weird. This was the last thing I wanted to happen was for me to be late on my first day. <laughs> Shit. I need to take a moment, bro. I need to take a moment. I need to take a moment. Oh my God. This is stupid. Excuse me. I'm having a bad day. I do not know where my classroom is. Could you help me, please? I have my plants are here, but I can't find my class. I'm, I'm here for my masters. Cause I'm like really smart, and like I just need to get these classes done so I can get my PhD. It's for my psychology computer. You're undergrad, so you're under me. Is that what that mean? What does that mean? What's undergrad? I'm sorry. 
I'm just here for my master's. And the only shred of evidence that he had to prove that he was a student at UCLA was his, wait for it, agenda. Your agenda? I have this book. This book of DDG gave me. I don't know why I need that. Where's my agenda? Oh, you have it. I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see that. So I got my agenda here with all my classes, all the info I have right here. Um, I'm running late though. We gotta hurry. We gotta hurry. We're running late. Come on. We can always count on Austin to bring the hard facts and evidence. I don't know why he'd lie about something like this. I feel like it's so easy to verify if you're a student somewhere. But at this point, I think, again, he knows that we know. And he's just saying, fuck it. Let's just go all in. Oh, a super random extra tidbit that isn't really in relation to anything I just spoke about. Remember that book that DDG gave him, The Perfect Marriage? Well, apparently it is not a book on advice about marriage. It's actually a psychological thriller and it's about a husband cheating on his wife and the mistress winds up dead. So hope that helps you, Austin. No, but really I feel like that's pretty solid evidence that he's full of shit because he was crying in a corner reading this book. Yeah, mm, probably not. Anyway, that's the update right now. I guarantee you once this video goes up, he is going to, I don't know, become a hitchhiker or move to Canada. I'm confused at this point, but that's it for right now. Good old Austin McBroom. Love talking about him. Four episodes in a row, is it? Oof, Jesus. We didn't talk about him last week, did we? You know, I love that you say last week, but it's always last episode. They're not a week apart, Lily. I told you I black out every other episode, so. I think you feel like we maybe just have one episode a week, but we have two. I just lose track of the days. Alrighty, now we're gonna get into our next and final topic. And shout out to Marky for bringing this to my attention as he does. I have to give it to him. He will bring like obscure shit that even I haven't seen. I'm like, oh, thanks. I did not see that at all. So this has to do with a random TikToker I have never heard of. Of course, what's new? Shocking, actually. And she goes by the name Dine in Toronto. She seems to have a presence on TikTok and she, I don't know, shows food or something. Forgive me, I didn't have time to look into it, but she's a TikToker, right? The reason why we're talking about this is because she posted the following TikTok that we're gonna watch and then what followed it is just like, so unpredictably weird. You would have never thought that anything at all would come from the TikTok we're gonna show you because it's so like, it, it's nothing. It's just a TikTok. Um, but someone found it offensive. When I told my dad I was going to be getting him the same pants that Gordon Ramsay has, he was so excited. I'm talking about the hex clad pants. And today my dad is gonna be showing us how to make a stir fried veggie and chicken with some fried rice. These pans are so- It's just a TikTok of her giving her dad a hex clad pan, which Hexclad sponsor us. I love my fucking Hexclad pants. They're the best things I've ever gotten for Christmas. Anyway, she's gifting it to him, being like, oh my God, dad, slay that meal. Great. There's nothing offensive about that TikTok. Well, she got this comment on this post and it's from a company called parchmentpaper.com, which I think if I'm not wrong, they don't just sell like parchment paper, they buy a Target. I think that they like print it for different companies and allow different companies who need parchment paper. Like they're like a wholesaler type thing. And they have like 45,000 followers, I think on Instagram. Oh, by the way, I feel like this all happened on Instagram and it might not even be TikTok. So I could be wrong about all of this, but it happened. This looks like Instagram, right? The, these for comments. Sure. Okay, so this did happen on Instagram, my bad. She did post a TikTok, but I guess she reposted it to Instagram is as where this all yeah. took place. So parchmentpaper.com comments on this post of her doing literally nothing and says, must be a tough life living life on easy mode. No, no, you're not ready for this. It's so random. It's so weird that she read this and didn't even catch on that he was being serious. So she comments back and says, lucky to have parents who make it possible. Like just like a regular, you know, yeah, I am lucky. It wasn't like she lives with her parents, was it? It was like she went over for dinner. I don't even care if that is the case. The house she's filming in is not a mansion or anything. So then parchmentpaper.com responds, yeah, we get it. You have no skills in family money with clapping hands. She does honestly <laughs> what I probably would have done as well and assume that they got hacked. I don't even know if that would be my assumption. I would just be so confused. I mean, I, I bet she was confused, but she kind of gave them an out. And at that point, I'm just like, okay, what the hell? Like maybe this account is hacked because from a business account, that seems kind of weird. So I send them an email and I'm like, hey, like I think somebody's on your business account, like leaving cyberbullying comments. Didn't say anything else, that was it. So after that post, he emails her and says, I don't consider stating factual information is cyberbullying, quote unquote, but if you're offended over a comment about having no skill set while getting to, quote unquote, frolic throughout life with family money is bullying, I'd call the cyberbully police. Delete the comment and move along. Cheers. Brandon Howard, founder and CEO, Black Label Paper. And then under it, it says partmentpaper.com inc. I am just so confused at anything that's happening, but from what I'm gathering, she posted a harmless TikTok, 
this person goes on their business account, the CEO of an actual business goes on his business account. You could have easily used your Brandon Howard account. I don't know why you felt the need to do this. And this isn't like a, come watch what I do in a day and like showing this really like extra over the top. I don't give a like, fuck if it was like a rich person bleaching their asshole. It doesn't for matter. For sure, but like, I don't even understand how they arrived at the response that he You'll gave kind her. of gather it soon as you see Brandon continue to open his freaking trap. He is very much like, oh, you guys are the woke mob, the woke blah, 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 blah. You little like girls she are- just showing her, her dad cooking. I know, but Brandon is very much the type that you would think would speak like this. But anyway, so he sends that email and- they even continued by commenting on Dine in Toronto's like Instagram post of all of this. Again, from parchmentpaper.com, the account. And it says, quote unquote, cyberbullying is even more funny. And the fact you emailed to tell us is actual hilarious. They spelled actually wrong. Love that. Nice typo. Yeah. Crying laughing emoji. Enjoy frolicking. He really likes the word frolic. What the fuck is wrong? I was thinking that too. I mean, I think one of them, I think he used it here. So then she used it in response maybe. And then that's why he used it in quotes. Like I think one of them used it and then the other one is just repeating. Who started it. the frolic train? We need to find out. Enjoy frolicking through life and leave the rest up to us adults who create actual economic value without a trust fund with a salute. I'm sorry, am I in another realm where she was in a mansion filming that Hexclad video? I know Hexclad pans are expensive, but where did he get rich from? She was in a regular That's house. What I'm like, this wasn't like a follow me through the day and look how easy my life was. It was like, watch my dad cook one meal. At any point in all of this, you're gonna be like, oh, he stops now and he doesn't. So she posts this TikTok where she's basically summarizing everything we just read, like all their interactions up until this point. And her caption says, from any other person, I would not care, but to use your business account and then your title as CEO to be rude to people you don't know is crazy, which absolutely I agree. And this actually went viral. So at this point, it is at like 2 million views. Yeah, 2.1 million views. I can't know whether to laugh or to be angry at this point because just by the name Brandon Howard, I can tell what kind of person this is and what kind of upbringing they have. So to sit there and tell me to be frolicking through life when you as a CEO have enough time to do this, it just bothers me that these are the people in power. These are the actual people with money and this is how their mentality works. The fact that you're leaving these comments tells me you're really miserable. And as an adult, I hope you seek the help that you need to find that happiness. Just grow up, dude. Like. So after this, the CEO said, whoa, 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 hold on a second. Just, just hold on. And he tried to, I guess, explain himself a little bit. And the reason why he did that is because, as you can guess, what happens when a business goes viral in the wrong way? Negative reviews. People go leave bad reviews. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is like the first thing that happens. Is it right? No. Which we don't encourage. We think that you should only leave reviews on places that you've actually had experiences with. But... I mean, karma. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And I mean, some of them weren't lying. This review says, piece of shit CEO. I'm not gonna lie, I've never ordered from here. But what I do know is that this piece of shit has been all over TikTok, despite saying blah, 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 then they go on. Like, that's not lying, technically. Is it a valid yeah. no, review? No, no I think, not yeah, really. Sure. So this started happening and he kind of panicked and said this on his Instagram story. It says, PSA, we do not or ever had a TikTok account. Okay. You would read that and think that maybe he's trying to deny that that was him who commented or whatever. But he's, he's trying to minimize it. Yeah, he's just trying to like play some weird semantics to just take less accountability. But anyway, he goes on and says, we made one comment. Mind you, this post is coming from the fucking business account again. We made one comment on Instagram about, quote, not having skills and frolicking through life, end quote, <laughs> which is not even close to the messages we have received. For all of you who have sent fraudulent reviews harassing, threatening, vulgar messages, etc. We have all of your IP addresses and personal information no, and will be included in defamation lawsuit. So get your daddy's checkbook ready. Oh my God, what is wrong with him? Right? First of all, you do not have everyone's IP addresses. That's not a thing that is possible. You didn't like bait everyone into clicking something that then gave up their IP addresses. You don't get that from leaving Google reviews. Nay, nay, that's not what he says. He has a screenshot. And on this screenshot, he censors out literally everything. But it says, we have 
everyone in all caps, everyone's personal information that has called and left threatening voicemails or texts and IP addresses if they made a fraudulent review to be included no, in the defamation don't. lawsuit if this continues. I would believe he has the personal information of people who called. I do believe that. Sure, you because you could look up their phone numbers, but you do not have IP addresses of people that left reviews. That is not a thing. Well, wouldn't they be linked to their Google accounts and then they could get the IP addresses that way? Well, who's to say they're not yeah, using a VPN? IP address you could access from anywhere. Like you could be at like a fucking Starbucks and it would be their IP address, not yours. But also you don't have access to that anyway. Well, he says he does. Then he just starts losing oh his ever loving God. fucking mind as if he hadn't already. He posts another story that says how to piss off 20 year old girls on social media with no life skills, dot, dot, dot. Make a comment about having no life skills with a bunch of crying laughing emojis. What? He went off the deep end and that's not even it. He continues on three crying laughing emojis. People crying about comments regarding their lack of skills in real life and brag about their family money. Quote unquote, cyber bully, grow up kids. Where was she bragging about family money? First of all, she wasn't. And second of all, my question is, who the fuck are you? And how do you know that nobody has any fucking life skills? I hate this capitalist ass mindset. And I mean, listen, I shop at Amazon, okay? I'm no angel. But I understand that this type of mentality is so toxic and horrible in the corporate world and whatever the fuck these CEOs that are like, who are you? You don't even have any fucking skills. Who the fuck are you? How do you have more skills than me, bitch? And he sells parchment paper. It's not exactly like he's like feeding the homeless. What's crazy is that our generation, I feel, was like one of the first generations who even figured out how to make the internet a career. And I'm not even talking social media. I was just gonna say, you mean have a business like run a successful TikTok account? Even besides social media, how many career paths have our generation kind of created, walked through, like expanded on? It's just insane. Especially ever since like COVID and stuff, because like the whole like work from home yes. thing, I feel like people have had to kind of be resourceful and figure out how they can make money on things that aren't requiring them to go into an office. And also why is he acting like the only people involved in this are 20 year old girls. Yeah, I'm 30, bitch. 33, <laughs> cheers. I'm sure we would absolutely be lumped in there in his mind. But my question oh, is- Oh yes, all of my family money. Is the only way to be successful to sell parchment paper or is like other forms of business okay with you? What, where do you draw the line? Do you know how many 20 year old millionaire women there are who fucking are self-employed? Like, it's just so weird. Did he do a deep dive? Does he know that she doesn't have like a different job? Or like, I, I'm just so confused. He's not giving me the uh, deep dive vibe. But he could have, right? Then he creates a sale on his website and he says, let's call it the crybaby special. Our thousands of real customers will appreciate this. On sale, custom dimensions, blah, blah, blah. Order now and stock up. So the crybaby sale, because we're a bunch this of crybabies. This is so weird. Then he posts again on his stories and says, thanks to all the non-woke new followers for snagging our cookbook. Shit looks like it was laminated in my ass cheeks. It literally is a spiral notebook. I created so many of those when I had projects in high school and you had to go to, um, what is it? The like FedEx stores Kinkos? that have the Kinkos. Yeah. <laughs> This is giving Kinko's, no offense to Kinko's employees. It literally is laminated. Like it's not actually laminated, I don't think. I think it just has a plastic front sheet. So wait, you don't just make parchment paper, you make shitty cookbooks as well. What does it say on it in the bottom? Everyday parchment paper recipe, what? <laughs> Oh, it's a literal cookbook Because they it's made. cooked on parchment paper? What a dumb idea. <laughs> Him and his team of two people are like, we need to sell more parchment paper. How can we do it? We create a cookbook where you have to cook on parchment paper. You know what? I'll say it. Parchment paper burns too easily and I fucking hate cooking with it. There you go. That's just because you're using your parents' money and have no life skills, Jesse. <laughs> At some point, he started sending out cease and desists, which are my favorite. So Janet's his lawyer. Right. And honestly, she very well may be because look at this. This screenshot this is him forgetting to fill out the actual template of the cease and desist i was gonna say this is code for he actually doesn't have a lawyer and he googled cease and desist templates and then forgot to fill it in because it literally says if you require any further information or clarification please do not hesitate to contact us at in parentheses your contact information that's where you put your I contact can't. information brandon maybe if he had more life skills he would know that i shit you not lily this next part might be one of my favorite things ever it's part of that same cease and desist and it says thank you for understanding and cooperation in this critical situation. If you choose to not publicly make a statement instructing your followers and fan base to seize, seize and desist. Sir, it's cease and desist. I mean, uh, honestly, not to keep bringing up Janet, but this seems like maybe she should call her cease and desist because like she was trying to like get our money and stuff. It may be hard for you guys to understand what we're saying, but a cease and desist is C-E-A-S-E. -E. He told them to S-E-I-Z-E, -E, seize, like have a seizure. 
on on the spot. Seas could mean take. I know, I'm just kidding. Like, <laughs> wherever he found the template, it was not a great And the source. worst part is that seas and desist is all in cap. So it just makes it worse. But it's so good. He said, you and your fan base, seas and desist right now. It's so good. This is giving like you getting sayings wrong. <gasps> when it's like, How that's what you, you thought it said. I don't believe it's defamatory because I have proof of your name saying all of those things. All I said was I was trying to be a nice person and look out for your company. I thought you were hacked because nobody <laughs> in their right mind would leave those comments from a business account, but you did and you continue to take it further and tell me that bring no economic value to this society or economy or whatever. Um, so yeah, like I don't believe it's defam defamatory. I also don't believe you have a legal department because you signed it incorrectly. It says legal department at parchmentpapers.com. You forgot the dot. I think the whole cease and desist thing kind of gave it away too. Oh my God. Well, it's nice to know Janet's still hard at work even though she's not posting on TikTok. <laughs> this is clearly her work game. and I know it when I see it. This that is, is a unreal. joke for legal purposes. The lack of proofreading is eerily familiar. I am so confused as to even if your own personal views were super weird and like, oh, 20 year old girls are useless, like whatever the fuck. You don't have anyone you could vent to about that at home or, or why or do you like at least like a troll account you could use? Like what, Literally. why would you want to do this to your business? How would you think that this is going to help? Make a Finsta. Like what are you doing? And then he's posting all of this to his story, super proud, almost as if he's positive that his fan base or his follower base or customer base, whatever the fuck it is, is going to like what's going on. They're like, oh, my customers are gonna appreciate this. How do you know that they're into trashing young women? What if they have daughters? Like, you're just so weird. Call me crazy also, but like, I don't feel like parchment paper is a super like, one company is way better than the other. I feel like people wouldn't really be like, you know what? I feel so loyal to this company, but I don't care what they do because I love their parchment paper so much. I feel like they might be like, this is weird. I'll find a different company. Lily, you're wrong. And what he does is the only thing that brings value to our society. And without him, we would crumble. Well, he has life skills. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I was so before fuddled by this. I literally, I mean, we've had so many like that whole TikTok purse lady, remember when she was just like berating that other woman, but she was doing that out of her house. The levels of delusional confidence are so high that like, I just don't understand how you get there. I agree. But also she at least was doing it out of her house. This is seemingly an actual business. What is going on? Yeah. Well, that's pretty much it. That is my weird ass topic that actually you can blame Margie for. You don't even have to blame me for. So thanks. I'm kind of sad that that's over because I want there to be some <laughs> Kind of resolution, but I don't think there ever will be. I'm pretty sure if we just follow Brandon, he might do something else in the next week. I feel like he's he's the type. I think honestly, weirdly enough, the most confusing part for me is that he has a cookbook. Well, he's got to sell that parchment paper somehow. True, true. We can move on to our We Love the Internet segment that I'm really hoping I have something for. I mean, honestly, that could serve as the We Love the Internet segment because that was pretty entertaining. But um, <laughs> no, I oh my god, I kind of have I have two. Can I show two? Save one for next week because then you don't have. Have one. I have more for next week. There are so many good ones. <laughs> Um, okay, so this first one has 18.3 million views. So maybe you've seen it before. <laughs> I was going through my For You page and I cried multiple times, but for different reasons. Like I'd see a dog one that would make me cry because it was like so sweet. And then I'd see one that like made me cry because I was laughing so hard. And then like I was crying at the Taylor and Travis ones part of, oh my God. You I were was just crying, crying at the, like, oh, come on, Lily. I'm about to get my period. But anyway. <laughs> that makes more sense. I'm like, they were cute, but they weren't that cute. <laughs> my For You page was just like attacking me last oh night. It was God. like everything I passed was giving me a new emotion. Okay, so this is one of the ones that made me cry because I was laughing so hard. And part of the reason I was laughing is because tell me this would not be me, the person filming. It says POV, I shouldn't have been trusted to record my friend's proposal. Oh my God, stop it. <laughs> She turns away to go film a raccoon. She missed it. <laughs> oh my God. I would kill her. What are the odds though that there's just a casual raccoon in there? First of all, the raccoon wasn't loud. Why would you even look away? That's so troubling. I have senses that would be able to tell me that there was a raccoon near. Oh my God. Honestly, kind of funny, but I would be pissed. I'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? I was dying. Oh, oh my God, God. I'm crying again. Okay, so I kept getting served the same account multiple times, but this is kind of a compilation of multiple aspects of it. We might have to mute it because of music, but you don't need to hear the sound anyway.
the dog doesn't want him to hit the baby. I don't want him to hit the baby either. Uh, well, he's not going to. I know, but... Mm. <laughs> but oh, well, no, oh my god, this part too. He has the dog hear the baby's heartbeat. The dog's like, the fuck is this in my ear? <laughs> no, look at him. Oh. 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 There's another one where it shows That's him sweet. listening while the baby's still, like, in the mom's mm -hmm. stomach. And the dog is like, he, like, perks up when he hears it. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. All a little, right. a little far. No, no. Keep watching. Keep watching. It, it goes to other ones. Don't you lick. I mean, I love my dog, but I, his mouth is gross. Oh. oh, it is so cute. I love it when dogs get really attached to the babies. Yeah, I feel like it could go one way or another. Either they're just like, what the fuck is my life now? Or they're really in love and they just think it's awesome. I'm mad. There's another one that I saw where it shows him like introducing the baby for the first time. And he's like so gentle and sweet with it. And it's, just, oh, I just love it Yeah, so I thought that was all very sweet. Except I didn't like when he was pretending to hit the baby. And I also didn't like when he was basically making out with the dog. Well, no, but it was good because he's showing that the dog was protective of the baby. Right, right. Yeah, I, I gathered that. But... It was giving Jennifer Coolidge, uh, no, not Jennifer Coolidge. Who is the one? I always just, <laughs> Wait, what? I always just have to shout out uh, Jennifer Coolidge, I guess. But um, it's giving the grandma or the aunt friend in There's Something About Mary when she would like lick the dog and they would just both like, <laughs> like literally just lick each other's mouth. <laughs> I don't remember that aspect. I swear I would die for my dog. His mouth is disgusting. I take care of him. He's had like his teeth taken care of. He's had dental cleanings, all that shit. I'm not getting near that thing. It's just, it's yucky. <laughs> I'm not trying to get super near my dogs too, but also I feel like your dog, it's a little different because they ha he has like mouth hair around it. Oh, he's got it. You know? Boy, does he. <laughs> like it makes him like, it's kind of like wet and like, <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> like not all dogs have like as much, you know? That's so true. Yeah, Still he's weird, got a beard but... almost for dogs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. Okay. Here's mine. It is something <laughs> really interesting I came across. It's so stupid, but I thought it was <laughs> funny. I was just about to make a video, and now I don't have the slightest idea what it was going to be about. <laughs> I've been walking around running errands in the cold for hours, and I've been reapplying the slip balm over and over because my lips get really dry in the cold and the wind. <laughs> uh, it is the Salt Air New Lip Oil Balm. I did not realize that they had color, so I've just been applying it haphazardly. I'm usually not super concerned like what I look like walking around. I'm wearing sweatpants, but I literally look like Chocolate Boy from Hey Arnold right now. <laughs> oh, what a reference. When I wow. first saw that, I was cracking the fuck up because it, it's not that bad if you're just a it's listener. It's very pigmented. Yeah, it is very pigmented lip balm, but it is just enough out of her lips that it doesn't look like it's a joke. It just looks like she doesn't know how to like apply any sort of lip product. It looks like it was a choice. I was just gonna say, it's funny because it looks like it was a choice. <laughs> it really does. And that's what makes it so much better. But you know what? Get those lips hydrated, queen. I thought that this would be <laughs> a good one to show because I get my lip filler tomorrow. <gasps> oh my God, how exciting. Are you excited or are you nervous? I have had multiple panic attacks. I've thought about it. I have gone back on it. I was like, I'm not doing it. Then I was like, okay, I am doing it. And Honestly, what I arrived at is it's dissolvable. I was just going to say, what goes away? Place. Yeah, but the dissolving of it, have you ever seen the process? Terrifying. It's well, pretty no, intense. But no, but doesn't it just go away on its own eventually? Your body metabolizes it eventually. But what if I get the Kris Jenner effect where her lips were all swollen? Remember that? I don't remember that now. And it doesn't help that my entire family. So for those of you that are against it, which there were a lot of you who were like, Jesse, don't you dare. In camp. Everybody, oh, Nassim, no. Joey, my mom, everyone's like, why would you do that? Blah, blah. Nassim is more supportive, but has made some jokes I didn't appreciate. <laughs> like what? Um, He showed my mom, somebody had something. It was something went wrong, I think. And he was just like, this is Jesse. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, that's not fucking funny. Ultimately, what I've settled on is I'm going to do it because I just feel like it would help me feel more comfortable. Honestly, is what it is. It has nothing to do with like, I hate my face. I hate my lips. I don't even have that small of lips. Like it's just yeah, something. No, when, when you said do. that you were getting them, I was like, 
oh, I've never even, like, I've never even had a second thought about your lips before. Yeah, they're not, like, tiny by any means. And I do not want, like, huge lips. Like, I would rather die. And that is the first thing I'm telling her. And I'm not that person that's going to be like, oh, I'm going to get this lip filler. And then in two months, I'm going to be like, well, they're actually not that big. Like, that's the mistake I feel like people make. They keep going back. They're yeah, like, for sure. oh, well, I need more. Also, though, I, I feel like even when I get Botox, um, she'll be like, oh, well, do you want, like, more here, more here? And I'm like, mm, I don't know, because I am on camera. So I don't want to, like, not have any emotion. you will be like the guy from Chris. Christmas with, cr- with the cranks. Yeah, that's my biggest fear. I don't want to look like not myself. And what she said is like, well, you can always get more. You can't get less. Yeah, exactly. So just like so start I'm conservative. Off- and then if you're like, oh, that's what I wanted. Or like, oh, that didn't do as much as I thought it would. Then you could get a little more if you wanted to. Exactly. So we'll see how it goes. This is the last episode I'm filming with my previous lips. So you guys, this is like a time capsule. And it's like instant. Like the Botox took a minute to like set in, but like lips, Well, that's why I'm be- doing it tomorrow because we have two days until we have to film again so you i was need like, some okay, more recovery time like oh i'm so scared i think it's gonna look good i hope so i it's something that i was like i don't ever want to go under the knife i don't think just the concept alone is terrifying to me right like i don't think i'm that hardcore when it comes to plastic surgery but little things like this i'm like it's something i could change might give me more confidence why not so stick with me let's see how it goes hopefully it goes all right but I- i'll tell you guys everything you already know anyway the do we know them girls are the injectable girls they're gonna be on here in a year just like no literally though can we talk about how there have been a lot of comments they're like lily your skin looks so great and i'm like hmm, i wonder why you know what slay it At makes a difference it makes me feel better sure. you know yeah. yeah it is what it is and if you want to do it and you're safe about it and do your research there's nothing wrong i don't think Correct. and so yeah i'll let you guys know how it goes Cheers anyway i'm that. terrified and that is uh where we'll leave you but anyway that being said i do hope you guys have an amazing weekend and yeah as always we will see you on monday bye bye, bye.